All right. So yesterday you started working on some beginning proofs. It's really hard to see that tiny little writing. So we're gonna do our warm up. We will go through all of the homework before even talking about taking a quiz. So our first proof is an algebra proof. Um, this one's a little bit tricky just because the equation's a little bit tricky, but not because the proof's tricky. So first thing I'm always going to write, especially in our algebra proofs, is just our original, our given. So I have 2x minus 9 all over 5 equals 1. And the reason that I can write that is that it's given to me. I need to unmirror my screen, it's backwards. Okay. <clears throat> so then to go from here, we have to understand that the inverse of dividing by five is to multiply by five. And so I would be multiplying by five on both sides and I'm just gonna write it out over here because we wouldn't show our work like in the proof. But in algebra class, what happens is I multiply by five. That doesn't multiply the numerator at all. It just cancels out. Five divided by five is gonna cancel. It's like if this was five over one, I'm really just reducing that and saying five over five is one over one. So I can get rid of that five and it's just going to leave me with two X minus nine. on the left hand side and then one times five would give me five. So from this, I can state this and then what is my reason that I can state that? What did we do? Multiplication, yeah, my reason is multiplication. <laughs> From here, from this statement, what's the next statement that I can make? If 2x minus 9 equals 5, okay, so then I can say that, what? 2x equals 14. Yep, 2x equals 14. How did I get there? What did I do? I added, I add nine to both sides. So the reason I can state this is because of addition. And if two X equals 14, then the last statement that I can make is that X equals seven. And the reason I can say that is division. I divided by two on both sides. And so, I should always be checking that where I land is my proof here for my algebra um, proof. So if you noticed, even without sound, I've gotten, I have gotten to an answer on my proof, I think going over the homework in yesterday's video that didn't match my proof. And then that let me know like, oh, I did something wrong and I had copied down the equation wrong and I went back and I rewrote it for you. But again, there was no sound. So that could have been a little confusing. Okay, so going from here should be my given at the top, should be my proof at the end. And that's true for any proof. Okay, so now let's look at one that's a geometry proof. And it has filled out this left hand side. So I know all of my statements. We're really just going to produce the reasons here. So first statement is that AC equals BD. Why can I state that AC equals BD. How do I know that? It's given to us, right? It's given to us that AC equals BD. So this statement is just our given. Let me kind of color code that. So AC is here saying AC that this segment 
is equal to BD, which is that segment, that this length is congruent to this length. The second statement made is AB plus BC, that this piece plus this piece adds up to the whole length. And that this piece plus this piece adds up to the whole length of BD. What is that? What theorem is that, postulate is that? Segment addition. Ad segment addition, yeah. So when I'm saying part plus part equals whole, that's the segment addition. And so yesterday in our lesson of intro to proofs, I talked about that those are things to look for. Segment addition, angle addition, always be looking for those two things. So now, third statement, takes these parts and sets them equal. So the reason that I can say this is that that's that substitution piece. So if I know that AC equals BD, let me color code. So AC, which is here, equals BD, which is here, well, all I'm doing on step three is I'm taking this equation, AC equals BD, and I'm substituting in its place, this is what AC is equal to, and this is what BD is equal to, right? So all I'm doing is I'm taking this equation and I'm plugging in what they're equal to, or I'm doing substitution. Now, I kind of feel like this proof is missing a step. So I'm gonna change step four because we talked about it yesterday in our notes. So before I get to this, I'm going to add a step to our proof. And that step is going to be that BC equals BC. That's a new property we learned yesterday. What is that property called? Something equals itself. Reflexive property? I remember it from like a reflection. Like I'm here, the reflection in my mirror is the same thing. Reflexive property, okay? We use the reflexive property for example, if I didn't have that diagram to go along with my explanation, it's important to point out that this is the same thing. Like this BC is equal to this BC, it's the same segment. That's the reflexive property. So I'm adding in a step and writing reflexive property. And as long as that's the same value, BC is equal to BC, well then, okay, so I have an equation here. Here's my balance beam. If I subtract BC here, I have to subtract BC here, but it's keeping this equation balanced. So the reason I'm saying this is this is the same amount. I can take out that amount and just be left with AB equals CD. And that's what it wants me to prove. Okay, so now I know I'm done. So in terms of when do I know where to stop, you stop when you get to your proof. Okay, and the reason that we can say that is subtraction. We just subtract, subtracted out the same amount from both sides of my equation. It doesn't feel great, right? It doesn't feel like an algebra equation. It feels harder um, or different but that's what we're doing is subtracting the same amount from both sides. Okay, let's look at our next proof in our warm up again, pre-filled. Let's see what it gives us. So this lists all the givens together. Uh, when you do a proof, I could either list it all here or I could list like one and two and then separately three and four and for both of them I can write given. So you can clump it or you can break it down, how, whatever works for you. But this is what was given to us. Now, anytime I'm, I have a proof, I take that given, I write it down, and I label it. So one is equal to two. I'm gonna label that. One and two are the same measurement, okay? I also know that three and four 
are the same measurement. Okay, so I know one and two and three and four, and I mark that. And what it wants me to prove, by the way, just to kind of see where I'm going, is it wants me to prove that ABC is equal to DEF. And before I even look to see what's down here, I can certainly see that I have part plus part equals whole angle there, that the angle is broken into parts. So right away, I should be looking for how can I create an equation using angle addition? And that's what step two gives me, is this angle addition equation. Okay, so ABC is one plus three, and DEF is two plus four. That's just stating how these larger angles are broken apart. That's angle addition. This is the tricky step. Then it says, well, ABC, I could also write as two and four. That goes back to here. So it's saying if one is equal to two, well, where one is, I can substitute in two. And where, if three is equal to four, where three is, I can substitute in four. So it's taking one of these angles and rewriting it using the given, using substitution from the given. So this it comes from substitution. And if that's true, well, DEF is equal to two and four, and ABC is equal to two and four. So then they must be equal to each other. And so again, what you're doing here is you're saying, well, D and F is equal to this. So where this is, two and four, I could instead write D, E, F. So it's substitution again. Okay. Okay. Let's go backwards a day and look at yesterday's warm up real quick. So Yesterday, you again had kind of this tricky algebra equation to work with, and we wanted to prove that x equals 3. Okay, so first, 4x plus 6 over 2 equals 9. There's my given. And then again, to get from here to here, I'm multiplying by 2 on both sides, which just gets rid of the division on this side. And 19 times 2 gives me 18. So to get to step 2, we use multiplication. What would my next statement be? So I have 4x plus 6 equals 18. What would my next statement be? 4x equals... Well, that's statement three, because I just subtracted six from both sides. So subtract six, four x equals 12, subtraction property. And last, x equals three, because of what property? Division. Okay. Those proofs should feel like gifts at this point. Those are like the gift proofs. Like here's an algebra proof. You feel very comfortable in algebra class. The other ones are, are the ones that are a little bit trickier. So now if you want to get out your homework, a couple of things here. Do you want to see the answers to the homework from the night before? Homework 11 again? Thanks, pause. Oh. Shoot. Oh well. Okay, so I have my given. DW is um, equal to ON. 
Now step two says CW is made up of DL plus OW. What would I fill in here? ON is equal to? ON is equal to? Does it matter which way I go? No, I can say ON is equal to WN plus OW or WO, whatever. Okay, but ON is made up of this piece and this piece. So I want to list that somehow. So I'm going to say um, WN plus OW. And that is segment addition. Okay, so start with my given. This is a look for. I should always be looking for segment addition and angle addition. And step three says substitution. So what do you think we're going to do next? We know these segments are equal. We know that they're broken down into these parts. What are we going to put here? We know that we're substituting somehow. We we'll put these two things together. Okay. I like it. You're close. So I'm not going to have DW anymore. Where DW is, I'm going to plug this in. And then, yep, that's going to equal this piece here. Okay, so I'm going to take DW and I'm going to substitute in its part. So DO plus OW. And I'm going to take ON and I'm going to substitute in what it breaks down into, which is WN and OW. That's substitution. So taking this initial statement and then plugging in what each of those segments are broken down into. <laughs> then it says OW equals OW. What property is that? Something equals itself. Reflexive property. Yep. Something equals itself. That's a little reflexive property. Why do we care that this equals itself? Well, if it's the same thing, well, in any equation, I can subtract the same thing from both sides, get rid of it, and then I can say dw equals wn, or sorry, not dw, do equals wn, which is what we want to prove, by the way. So that's good that we landed there. And we did that by subtraction, subtracting out OW. Okay, so that's proof number one from our homework. I'm just gonna scroll up for a minute to the top since my recording was paused. People wanna check their one, two, and three. And on the back, you had another proof. I mean to give you a moment if you haven't gotten to it. I know we were that this homework was a struggle. I'm gonna give you like 30 seconds if you haven't filled those in and see if you can figure out what to put there. All right, let's do this. So what's my reason for statement number one? Why can I say this? It's given. I could label it, it's already kind of labeled for me with these tick marks. So one and three are the same, two and four are the same. Statement number two breaks apart ABC and says it's one plus two. And that DEF is three plus four. What is that called? Angle addition. And then, it rewrites DEF as one and two instead of three and four. What happened there? What happened? How did I do that? Substitution. It's magic. Did we know one and three were the same? We did. One and three is the same. 
So where three is, I can substitute one in. We also know that two and four are the same. So where four is, I can put two in. Okay, that's a little game of substitution. It does, doesn't it kind of feel like a magic trick when you're writing a proof? If you're just setting it up, so you can be like, boom, and then this is true. No? A little fun? A little bit get that feeling? It's a little magical. Okay, so this is substitution where I'm taking three and I'm substituting in one, and I'm taking four and I'm substituting in two. And if DEF equals this, well, one and two, one and two equals ABC. So I can again do substitution and say, well, then ABC must equal DEF, which is what we want to prove. That the measure of angle ABC must equal the measure of angle DEF. And again, through substitution, I'm saying this. Oh, it also equals that, so I can plug that in there. Okay. So now I would like for you to find your notes from yesterday. You should have the first two pages of notes number seven done. But we're going to pick up on um, the page. It says definition of midpoint and definition of bisect at the top. Page number 17. The page numbers don't print out very well, or maybe it's 17. I think it is. It's kind of half there. Okay, so it's part of notes number seven. It's the second half of notes number seven. These are a little bit trickier, even than yesterday's. Now, the midpoint and the bisect one that we're going to look at. Um, we're going to look at like the actual theorem and the way we're what we're going to ask to prove is a little bit harder than what you would normally use it for. So I wrote at the top definition of midpoint, definition of bisect, just to kind of give you an idea of where we see it most of the time. So I'm going to draw um, a diagram for definition of midpoint. So for definition of midpoint, I'm going to draw a segment. A, B, and I'll put X in the middle, okay? And so if I'm given that X is the midpoint of A, B, if I'm given that, In my proof, or if I'm just asked what I can conclude from that, given that X is the midpoint of AB, I can say that AX then is equal to XB. That's, that's how we see midpoint most of the time. Okay, again, the proof underneath is a little more formal. So given that, I can say that AX then is equal to XB, that this length then would be the same as that because X is in the middle. The reason I can say that is definition of midpoint. So in our proof, we would write this. I usually shorten definition. And I even shorten midpoint usually and write it as MDPT, okay? So if this is given to us, we know this because that's the definition of the midpoint. And that's how we see it 99% of the time, not quite as formal as the one we're gonna do down below. We also see bisects, so bisects with an angle. I have an angle, let's call it angle ABC. And I have a ray in the middle that is bisecting my angle. Bisecting means it's cutting the angle into two equal parts, okay? So I'll even label my angles one and angle two. Kind of separate this. 
So if I'm given that BX, okay, that ray in the middle, bisects angle ABC, okay, if that's what I'm given, then the statement that I can make is that the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle two, that these then must be the same angle measurement, because that's the definition of bisect. Okay, so this is kind of how most of the time midpoint and bisect is presented to us. We know that info so we can make a statement about it. <clears> okay, <throat> hey. so now we're going to try a couple of proofs with midpoint and um, bisector theorem. And these are, again, a little more involved because it's asking for something very specific here, which is fine. Um, I'm gonna give you our givens and our proofs. So the given that we're gonna have on this proof is that M is the midpoint of segment AB. That's my given. And we wanna prove this theorem. Okay, so the theorem that's written above that says, if M is the midpoint, then AM equals one half AB and MB equals one half AB. So our proof is that AM equals half of AB. And we also are gonna have a second proof, which is MB equals half of AB. Put our segments in. So we're proving a theorem in this proof. And so let's look at what those letters mean. So it's saying M is the midpoint of this segment. And we want to prove this theorem that will tell us if that's the midpoint, then this segment is half of the whole segment. And that this segment is also half of the whole segment, which we, we know is true because the midpoint theorem already exists. But we're going to pretend it doesn't exist. And how can we prove that it's true? Okay. So first thing we're going to do is write our given. M is the midpoint of AB. Given. If I have midpoint, I'm gonna follow it with the statement. What would that statement be? What's the definition of midpoint mean? So M is the midpoint of AB. What then is true? We wrote an example up above. If M is the midpoint of AB, then AM equals MB. Okay, if M is the midpoint. So anytime, any, any time in a proof you have midpoint or bisect, we're going to follow it with a statement like that. So then AM equals MB. That is the definition of midpoint. And I could label it if I wanted to. And then these are the same length. <clears throat> Now to get to our theorem, we're gonna, again, it's like a magic trick. The next thing I'm gonna write is that AM plus MB, that these two parts equal my whole segment. Okay, so those are equal parts and they also equal the whole segment. So AM plus MB equals my whole segment. What's that called? Part plus part equals whole. Segment addition. Okay, are you ready for some magic? I 
I know that AM equals MB. I know that they are equal, which means I can play a little game with substitution. And where MB is, I can plug in AM because they're the same value. It's like X equals three. Oh, okay, so I can plug three in for X. MB equals AM, so I can plug AM in in its place, which would give me this equation. AM plus AM, okay, again, substituting in here because I know they're equal, equals AB. That's the magic trick, that's substitution. And I have two AMs here. I have one here and one here. So I can rewrite this as two AMs equals AB, which is just combined like terms. And if 2am equals AB, then I could divide by 2 on both sides and rewrite that as AM equals AB over 2 or half of AB. And all I did was divide by 2 on both sides, just like I'm solving an equation. That's division. I'm going to run out of space. Hey, look at that. That's our first proof. We've just proved that AM is half of the whole length. And we're pretty much done. Because these are equal, I can just throw MB in for AM. So I could also say that MB is equal to half of the whole length, just using substitution. Okay, that's what we would call proof number two. Okay, so I broke my proof part into two parts there. Let me zoom in on that equation. Okay, all I did was substitute here because I know that they're equal to each other. Okay, that's our formal proof for the midpoint theorem. Again, most of the time when we use midpoint, we're just using that Step number two, M is the midpoint of AB. Okay, so these parts are equal definition of midpoint. That's most of the time all we'll see with that. Okay, so um, I think I'm gonna skip the angle bisector theorem so that we have time for our um, quiz because that's pretty much the same as up above but with angles instead of segments. And again, we don't see something quite that formal all the time. But I do wanna do the proof on the back here and talk about our last property for this unit, which is our transitive property. The transitive property, it's like a chain, kind of. Okay, so the transitive property is like taking substitution at the level. So it's saying that if A equals B and B equals C, then if A equals B and B equals C, what else would be equal? Yeah, C and A, okay? Because they're both kind of linked by B. They both equal B. If A equals B and B equals C, then A must equal C as well. Okay, that's our transitive property. And this is a big property. We see that a lot, kind of this linking effect where I can now make another statement um, to use possibly for substitution or whatever. So this is a really quick proof because it gives us a whole lot of information. Okay, so here's our diagram. I'm gonna break down our given. So first we know AB is congruent to BC. That's a given. And I'm gonna mark it. AB 
is congruent to BC. <laughs> we also know that AD is congruent to BC. That's our second given. So BC here is also congruent to AD. Oh, did I go out of order? I did. I skipped to here, didn't I? That's okay. AD is congruent to BC. The other given is that AD is congruent to DE given. So I went out of order in how I wrote it, didn't I? AD, BC, AD, DE. So this segment AD is also congruent to DE. Huh, looks to me like all those segments are the same length, right? Because I can kind of see as I went through AD to BC, BC is also the same length as AD, AD is also the same length as DE. Okay, they're all the same length. And what it wants me to say is that DE is congruent to AB. Well, can I say that? <laughs> if I know that AB equals BC and BC is equal to AD, so now I know that these are the same. And oh, hey, look at that. AD is equal to DE. Okay, do you see that chain that just happened? Okay, this equals this and this thing is equal to that, and that thing is equal to this. So these two must be equal. Okay, there's kind of this chain effect that happens. So then it's fine for me to say that DE is congruent to AB because that's the transitive property. Okay, that kind of links each piece together. <clears throat> What you will see for homework tonight is a quiz review. This second quiz I've decided to not make a formal quiz. So it'll be like a checkout quiz. So it'll be a little bit of a heavier weight for a checkout, but I'm not gonna put it in as a summative grade because we're still working on proofs. So what will happen is tomorrow when you log into Zoom, we'll go over this quiz review. So all the proofs, all of it, but it's not all proofs, right? So there's other stuff in here. It's the if then statements okay, and the converse and the biconditional or the counter example. That's um, notes number five, I want to say, and homework 10. Okay, that's this stuff. The other thing that was, is on this quiz that we haven't looked at yet or really discussed on yet ooh, what's that? Um, is segment and angle addition. So here I'm just setting up an equation. This piece plus this piece equals the whole length. That was aggressive, Miss Matt. <laughs> um, and then once I solve for X, it's asking me to solve for a few other things. But again, we'll go over all these questions tomorrow over Zoom. Here's an angle addition, and then you angle addition, and then you see an algebra proof, and then one fill in the blank geometry proof. And your checkout quiz is pretty much the same. So tomorrow we'll log in, we'll go through all of this, and one of your assignments tomorrow is um, to do the checkout quiz afterwards, okay? Um, we're also gonna take some very light notes tomorrow. So it's super important to be there. If you're not there, absolutely watch the video or else you'll feel really behind when we start doing unit review. We're almost at the end of the unit. Um, what we're gonna do now, let me just pause.